Hello everyone, this is Cloud5380 with my guide on the Hellhound Slayer assignment. In this guide we will be talking about the skills required to fight them, who assigns them as a task, best location to do the task, best strategy using their weaknesses, recommended equipment from highest to lowest, tips and tricks and of course the key drops from them. Now you can choose a certain section of this guide if you wish or just click the play all option, make sure you have annotations turned on. So to start this guide off we will talk about the skills required to fight them. So, like some other Slayer monsters, Hellhounds don't actually require a Slayer level to be assigned them as a task, but however, a high combat level is required to be able to kill them effectively. There are two different kinds of Hellhounds, you have combat level 122s and combat levels of 127. The level 122s have 1150 life points and the other ones have 1160 life points, so it's only 10 difference which isn't much. Both have melee based attacks and their max hit is either 118 or 130 depending on their level. No Slayer specific item is required to kill them. I recommend having 85 plus combat and 43 plus prayer before being able to fight them effectively. Um, it can be done at lower levels but this is just what I recommend to be able to do them as quick as possible. So that's it for the skills, now we will talk about who can assign them to you as a task. The lowest Slayer Masters who assign Hellhounds as a task is Simona. She can be found inside Ponda Viak and she has these requirements to be able to use her as a Slayer Master. So you must have 85 combat, 35 Slayer and completed the Smoking Kills quest. Now I do recommend having 95 combat before asking her for frequent tasks just to increase the speed of the assignments as you'll find a higher combat level depends on how quick you'll complete each um, assignment she gives you. Simona can assign between 120 to 185 Hellhounds. The next highest Slayer Master to assign them is Duradel or Lapalock. Duradel is replaced by him after you complete Wild Guthic Sleeps, but they both have the same function. They can be found in Shiloh Village, and you must have completed the Shiloh Village quest to be able to reach them. You need both 100 in combat and 50 Slayer to use them as a Slayer Master. I do recommend having 110 combat before asking them for frequent tasks, though, just to increase the speed of the assignments. Both can assign between 130 to 200 Hellhounds. The other Slayer Master is Curadal, she is the highest Slayer Master and can be found inside the Ancient Cavern. You must have completed the Barbarian Training minigame in order to reach her. To use Curadal as a Slayer Master, you need both 110 Combat and 75 Slayer. It's up to you if you wait till your 120 Combat before asking her for tasks, but obviously it can be done without. Curadal assigns between 130 to 230 Hellhounds. Anyways, that's it for the Slayer Masters, on to the locations where you can fight them. So Hellhounds are one of the few assignments which actually have quite a few locations where you can fight them. However, um, taking out obviously the disadvantages and um, you know requirements you need for some of the locations, there are actually only really three main um, locations to fight them. However, you have got um, the other ones as additional options if you choose to use them. So the first main location is the Tavoli Dungeon, which is located northwest of Falador and slightly south of Tavoli. Um, this is quite the most popular place for killing hellhounds. It's just um, the route to get to them can be a bit of an, an annoyance unless you have a certain agility level. So um, you can use two different shortcuts in the Tavoli Dungeon. The first requires 80 agility to get through, and obviously this will take you pretty much directly to the hellhounds. The next lower level agility shortcut is the pipe which requires 70 agility to get through which will take you to the blue dragons which is then only a short walk to reach the hellhounds. Now obviously if you're using a summer pie you can either have 65 agility to get through the, um, the pipe or 75 agility to get through the other shortcut. So obviously if you have neither of these requirements it means you're going to have to walk all the way around Tavoli Dungeon before reaching the hellhounds which means you'll need to get the rusty key from the prisoner who is near the black knight's uh, lair and then to pass some lesser demons, blue dragons and black demons to reach the hellhound. So it will take you about three to four minutes to get round the whole of the dungeon and reach the hellhounds but obviously if you bring enough supplies you should be able to get the assignment done between one or two trips. So as you can see just after you run past the poisonous spiders um, you shall see there's quite a few hellhounds in the area. Um, they're kind of separated apart from each other and it is only single combat so you can only fight one at a time which does give you a small advantage. Um, this is most popular kind of place for players to fight hellhounds so you will occasionally find one or two other players here but ideally this is kind of like the first primary location to go to if possible. Now the second primary location is actually pretty much in this area as well which is the Tavoli Resource Dungeon. Now if you have a certain dungeoneering level 
which I believe is level 55 Dungeonarian. Uh, obviously, I'll make an annotation. If that's wrong, that's just me guessing off the top of my head. <laughs> um, you can use the resource dungeon. Now, if we go inside here, you'll see there's a great number of Hellhounds, which obviously is good news for you because you've got more to fight. Um, there's kind of an advantage and disadvantage about this is that it's multi-combat. So obviously, the disadvantage is you could have about four or five Hellhounds fighting you at once, which if, you is, if you're not using Prayer and you haven't exactly got the best defense level, you will take quite a few hits off them. But if you have 43 prayer, like I mentioned at the beginning of the guide, you can just use protect from melee the whole time so this shouldn't bother you. The major advantage about this um, resource dungeon is you can use the dwarf multi-cannon in here as well, so which means obviously it's going to cost you a bit of money for all the cannonballs, but you probably had to complete this task so effectively and quickly just by using the cannon and fighting them alongside it. Um, obviously these guys do drop clue scrolls, so you hopefully should make your money back from the cannonballs if you get a good clue scroll. The third and final primary location to fight Hellhounds is at Curadale's Dungeon. Um, I'm just outside Curadale's Dungeon here as you can see in this clip and literally the minute you go inside the dungeon you're right next to the Hellhounds. So obviously the advantage is if you can teleport to Curadale using her ring um, you can pretty much bank to and from the trips quite effectively and also you've got the summoning obelisk nearby if you're using like a healing familiar you can keep using the obelisk to um, regenerate your summoning points. Um, only downside is you obviously must have been assigned to the task by Curadel herself to be able to use her dungeon. Um, but yeah, it is a pretty good location. Obviously, you can use a ferocious ring in here to boost your attack. Obviously, cause a lot of higher level players will get Hellhounds quite frequently. You probably will find one or two people in here. So if you want a world on your own, you're going to have to hop a few. But I always kind of use this location or the resource dungeon when fighting Hellhounds myself. So like I said, they're the three primary locations. As I mentioned, there is some other ones, which is the Witch Haven Dungeon, um, which isn't really recommended as it only has two Hellhounds in here. Um, there is safe spots to use, which is obviously the reason some players do go here. But obviously being only two dogs in there, the respawn rate is quite slow, so the task will take you absolutely ages. Um, another location for them is the God Wars Dungeon. Um, you can go in there and fight the Hellhounds. Obviously you must have protection from the different gods' monsters, and obviously it will take you a bit longer to get there but obviously that's an option um, there is also some hellhounds in level 50 plus wilderness which you can fight um, you won't find many players over there being such high level wilderness but obviously it's the risk of losing your stuff and also there is the wilderness volcano which there is quite a few hellhounds but since obviously the wilderness has come back where um, players can fight each other it is quite a popular hotspot on some worlds for um, PKers to kind of reside because they know people will go fight hellhounds there. So like I said the Tavoli dungeon, the Tavoli resource dungeon and Curadale's dungeon are the three main locations I recommend if you're going to do this task. Well that's all about the locations, next is strategies using their weaknesses. So Hellhounds have a few weaknesses, their main one is um, they are weak against stab style attacks which you'll find most weapons have this attack style such as daggers, spears, long swords etc and they are also weak against ranged attacks so obviously you can use bows, crossbows etc to be able to fight them with um, a ranged setup as well. Now I have a little bit written down here to help with the strategy of fighting them which is increasing the kills per trip. So as Hellhounds use a melee based attack, protect or deflect melee will completely nullify their attack. So obviously you can bring a few prayer potions if you start getting low health and can turn on your protect or deflect melee or you can just use a prayer setup and rely solely on that. And also as their drops are stackable they only drop charms, um, glue scroll and effigies which you're only going to be able to fill up about 5-6 spots with that. Um, their bones can be collected and if you have either the tablets or the rooms to use it you can use bones um, to bananas or peaches so obviously you'll get yourself some more food um, so you can stay there longer. Um, also to increase the time of your stay at the Hounds use healing methods such as Saradon and Godsword, Enhanced Excalibur, Bunyip, Unicorn Stallion or a Beast of Burden Familiar to carry some supplies for you. That's all for the strategies now for recommended equipment from highest to lowest. So, as said in the previous section, Hellhounds are weak against stab attacks and ranged attacks. So, the two setups I've listened to you today is to give you the best melee setup possible using the stab attack and the best range setup possible. Obviously, these are only recommendations. If you want to change or amend any part of it, it's completely up to you. So, don't feel you have to go by what I've said. So, this is the setup I have listed for melee style from highest to lowest. So, for helmet, you want either full slayer helmet, slayer helmet, black mask, helmet, knives, or not, dwarven helm, fighter hat, for 
cape, you want completionist cape, fire cape, soul wars cape, trim skill cape, ardine cloak or god cloak. For amulet, you want either amulet of fury, amulet of glory, amulet of strength, demon horn necklace or god stole. For weapon, you want either chaotic longsword, chaotic rapier, zamorakian spear, karate sword or a brackish blade. For body, you want either bandos chest plate, barrow's body, which is like either um, verax, um, guffins, etc. Um, dragon plate body, fighter's torso or rune plate body. Uh, for legs, you want bandos tessets, barrow's legs, dragon plate legs or rune plate legs. For gloves, you want either gl um, glass gloves, barrow's gloves, region bracelet or combat bracelet. Uh, for boots, you want steadfast boots, dragon boots, bandos boots, rune boots or rock climbing boots. For ring, if you're in Kyridal's dungeon, use ferocious ring for extra damage or either onyx ring imbued, berserker ring imbued or just a normal berserker ring. And this is what you'll want for your inventory. You'll want some form of an emergency teleport just in case. Um, extreme or super attack strength and defense potions. Prayer or super prayer potions. Um, some food. Um, holy wrench if you plan on using um, prayer at all. The holy wrench will help um, give you more points for your prayer potions. And also runes for bones to bananas or peaches if you intend to use that. Also a healing familiar will increase kills per trip such as a bunyip, um, a unicorn stallion or you can use a beast of burden familiar to help carry some items for you such as the war tortoise, spirit terror bird etc. Anyways that's it for the melee style setup, like I said you can make any changes or amendments to the list if you wish, um, this is just basically what I've used in the past for myself. So if you plan on using range, this is the range style setup I have recommended for you all from highest to lowest. So for the helmet you'll want either false layer helmet, focus sight, armadillo helmet or helmet of nosotot. For cape you want either Ava's device, completionist cape, fire cape, soul wars cape or trim skill cape. For amulet you want either amulet of ranging, amulet of fury, amulet of glory. Uh, weapon, chaotic crossbow, crystal bow or rune crossbow. For shield you want either the god book or dragonfire shield. For body, um, armadillo chest plate, black dragon hide body, red dragon hide body. Uh, for legs, armadillo chain skirt, black dragon hide chaps, red dragon hide chaps. For gloves, swift gloves, barrows gloves, black dragon hide van braces. Uh, red dragon hide band braces for boots, glaven boots, ranger boots, or snakeskin boots, and for ring, ferocious ring if you're using Curadale's dungeon, or archer's ring imbued, or a normal archer's ring. And for your inventory, you'll want an emergency teleport just in case you need to escape, um, ranging potions, diamond bolts enchanted, or runite bolts, or any lower, just make sure you bring enough for the task, um, a few prayer potions in case you need to use protect melee, um, some food, um, runes for bones to bananas or peaches if you're going to use that, and also a healing familiar will help increase kills per trip, or you can use a beast of burden familiar to help carry items for you. So that's it for the range style setup, like I said for the melee style setup these are only recommendations, you can make any changes or amendments to this if you wish, this is just um, what I've used in the past and what I recommend. Well that's all for the recommended equipment, next is tips and tricks. So the tips and tricks I'm going to list for you today is kind of what I've used in other guides um, for other monsters as well like Steel Dragons, Dark Beasts etc and also depending on where you're going to be doing the location to fight these will depend on whether this tip and trick will really be effective for you or not. So my first tip and trick is on saving prayer points which is using a good popular method which many people know about called prayer flashing which is basically turning off the prayer just after an attack has finished and starting again before they send another one. Now obviously at Hellhounds use melee and if your health starts to get low you might want to consider using protect from melee prayer so this method here will kind of help um, save the amount of points you're using and will save your money for prayer potions etc. So um, if time well this can be effective but also risky as you need to be spot on with the timing otherwise you'll get hit so it might take you a couple of hellhounds to kind of get into the rhythm of how quick they attack and once you do it a few times you'll find this saves you quite a lot of points so my next tip and trick is on how to save life points and increase the time you can spend um, on a trip fighting these hellhounds which is what I've mentioned throughout this guide using the bones to bananas or peaches method so obviously charms are their main drops and also the occasional clue scroll ancient effigy so you're only really using six um, slots to collect loot so that leaves obviously um, a massive amount of space in your bag and they always drop bones now obviously you can use bone crusher which will either get you some prior XP without having to pick up the bones or if you don't want to do that um 
bring some runes to use either bonus to bananas or peaches or you can even use tablets to do it as well and basically keep collecting um, all the bones from the hellhounds and once you've got a full bag you can then use the spell and turn them all into either bananas or peaches which you can use to heal so obviously that will increase the duration um, you can spend at the hellhounds per trip and also save you some money on um, food so the final tip and trick is to increase the speed of the task which um, like I said will depend on what locations you can use which in this case is the Tavernly Resource Dungeon. Now like I said before it's a multi-combat area so your advantage for this is you can bring the Dwarf Multi-Cannon. So as you can see here I've brought it along to this task and as soon as you um, set it up your Dwarf Cannon will start taking on every single Hellhound in the entire area pretty much. Now there's only two really disadvantages with this but obviously um, depending on your luck and skill could come to your advantage. One is obviously all those hellhounds will be trying to come after you at the same time so you will need to use protect from melee all the time unless you've got an extremely high defence. Um, you are going to take quite a few hits off them so protect melee is needed to be kept on. Obviously an alternative for this is to bring some prayer armour to save the um, depletion of prayer points and also the cannonballs um, doing this method is going to cost you and obviously the only kind of profitable loot you'll get from this task is the clue scroll and that's if you get a good reward from it so obviously it's up to you it's just if you really can't be bothered to do the task and want to get straight through it just for the XP the cannon is the ideal um, opportunity for you to do that and obviously using this cannon and the cannonball you're probably only going to be here quite a f uh, only a fair few minutes and the task will be finished so that's just an option for you Anyways, that's all for the tips and tricks. Next is the um, key drops and rewards from them. So, you will earn 116 Slayer XP per Hound. A task of 100, therefore, will get you 11,600 Slayer XP and even more for a high amount of sign, such as 150, 200, etc. Now, normally I have a huge list of drops I write down to look out for, but considering Hellhounds barely drop anything, um, you're going to want to collect any of these items if you see them. So, um, gold charms, green charms, crimson charms and blue charms, um, ferocious rings, if you're in Curiodout's dungeon they may drop them, um, clue scroll hearts, that's definitely one you want to look out for, um, starved ancient effigies, and bones, if you're planning to use the bones to bananas or peaches spell, if not, bone crusher will be also be handy to use here. Um, the Ring of Wealth does increase the chance of getting a clue scroll, however due to the high amount um, of Hellhounds you'll be assigned, um, you're likely to get one without it, so just use one of the other rings I've mentioned, but of course if you really want to increase the chance of getting one, bring the Ring of Wealth with you. Well, that's pretty much it for my guide on these monsters. I am pretty sure I have covered almost everything and hopefully make your future tasks with these much more effective. Of course, if you have any questions about them, then feel free to ask in the comments section below. Uh, these tasks do take time, but they're very worthwhile for the XP and you can um, hopefully get a very good clue scroll reward from them because obviously depending on your luck will depend on how many clue scrolls you're going to get. I think before where I've had a task of about 200 I actually ended up getting three clue scrolls during that time because um, once I got one I went off and done it, came back and carried on doing the task so that's an option for you if you want to make some good money. Well, thanks for watching everyone. I have worked hard on this, so if you'd be so kind as to like, comment, favourite, subscribe, and of course, share with your friends. Thank you everyone, and happy slaying.